أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواسوا بالحق وتواسوا بالصبر إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل لقدة من لسان يفقه قولي سبحان الله وبحمده عدد خلقه ورضاء نفسه وزنة أرشه ومداد كلماته اللهم بارك لي رجب وشعبان وبلغنا رمضان الحمد لله وشكر الله وثانك الله سبحانه وتعالى فلان يستجادة هي في his remembrance for the remembrance of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم Another week has passed we're entered the mid of Rajab 11 days of Rajab have already passed 12 days of Rajab have already passed the Prophet said that Rajab is Shahrullah, the month of Allah. Shaban is my month. And Ramadan is the month of my community. Rajab, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that out of the months of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, four of them are sacred. Rajab, which stands alone. And then there is Dhul Qaida, Dhul Hijjah, and Muharram. Three months are sacred in the sight of Allah. Allah says explicitly in the Quran that do not wrong yourselves in them. Do not commit zulm upon yourselves. Do not oppress your souls. What does that zulm mean? Fighting. Do not, yeah. One of those things about the fighting is the necessity. Allah points to us in the direction that, do, that fight against your nafs. Do the jihad e akbar. Do the jihad against your nafs. Against your desires, start putting them down. Start removing cruel and crude behavior from your, from your lives. Prepare for Ramadan. Our preparation for Ramadan begins now. We also mentioned was that Rajab is the month of Zakat. Rajab is the month of Zakat, not Ramadan. Everything has its time and the time for Zakat is the month of Rajab. Why? Because it is the time, it is the month of Allah. When you want to get close to Allah, you go and you show shafqat al khalq. You show compassion upon creation. One way of showing compassion upon creation is by spending what Allah has commanded you to spend. This is the first thing. And beyond that, to spend what is from your own. الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ وَيُقِيمُنَ صَوْبِ مَا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ That those who believe in the unseen and establish their prayer and spend from which that they have. So all these things start to tie up in the month of Rajab. We start asking for Tawbah in this month. This is the month of Tawbah. This is the month of repentance. This is the month of turning back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sorting our lives out. Sorting out those problems that are keeping us away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's presence. This is the time that we begin to attach our hearts and our souls to the mosques however close or far they may be so that we may become habitual in praying our salah in the mosque in the best possible way this is the month because when Ramadan comes it will be too late then we will not be used to it then we will feel tired because we'll have fasted the whole day but then in the evening we'll have eaten too much so we can't get off our seats there is no balance within our lives. There is no middle point in our life. What we just need to understand is in this month, the month of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we need to turn back to Allah. In Shaban, inshallah, in, in two or three weeks' time, the Prophet sallallahu said, Shaban u Shahri. Shaban is my month. In that month, we will increase in our connecting our soul to the Prophet sallallahu and the best way to do that will be by reciting durood on the Prophet as much as possible. In Rajab, we have the night of Mi'raj. Look at this, this is the month of Allah. And in this night, the Prophet on the 27th was called up to the heavens. 
shown heaven and hell and the ziyarah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He saw what he saw, as the Quran says. Alayhi salatu wasalam. And then Ramadan is the month. Ramadan is the month of the community. This is for us. This is for us to go and harvest, to reap the fruits that we have been planting from now. Rajab is the time when the soil is cleared, when the soil is worked and seeds are planted. In Shaban, we'll water and look after the crops and make sure weeds and insects and other things are not coming to eat our crop. Inshallah, when we enter Ramadan, if everything has gone according to plan, Ramadan is only picking the fruits and enjoying. How many people go into Ramadan stressed? They come into Ramadan and they say, tomorrow, oh my God, is Ramadan already here? And before they know it, one week has passed, ten days have passed, and the Quran has not been opened. Four or five tarawis have already been missed. Yeah, namazes were being missed. Why? Because we are not prepared. We have not got into the, into the dynamics. We have not got into, into, the, into the whole uh, circle of it, into the right cycle. So we need to understand how we can do this. And inshallah, today we will talk about the concept of tawbah. The concept of repentance and turning back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And inshallah, like always, we'll just read certain excerpts. This book, um, The Degrees of the Soul by Abdul Khaliq al-Shabrawi, rahmatullah alayhi. And he says in here, Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim <clears throat> Let whosoever wishes to reach Allah the Exalted, first enter from the gate of all gates, which is repentance. Repentance is such a thing. Inshallah, let's go. This is the first gate to be crossed by the servant when he seeks to enter the presence of nearness to the exaltation of his Lord. You want to get to Allah? I want to get to Allah? We all claim that we want to get to Allah. But in order to take that first step of that journey, you have to put yourself in that line of that path. And that door that enters you and allows you to get onto the path is the door of Tawbah. We were given a very concise um, similitude or an example that imagine a few people have escaped from an oppressive ruler or they've been imprisoned and they run down after they've escaped down to the seashore. They find a boat there. They jump into the boat in, in the depth of the darkness at night. They cover themselves up so that no one can see them. They take the oars from the side and they start paddling. And they paddle and they paddle and they paddle until dawn. How far have they got? They are tired. They've been paddling the whole night. And then one of them says, let me just check how far we've got to make sure that we have not, you know, that there's no land around or no one is following us. He looks up and he sees that the boat is still in the same place it was as when they jumped into it at first. What was the problem? Child. The problem is, they did not let go of the ropes that was holding the boat, that was holding the boat to the pier, to the harbor. And this is what, for us, the similitude is that when we want to travel to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we need to cut these ropes first that are holding us back. We come here, or we do anything, but how many namazes have we missed in the day? How many namazes have we missed? We don't want to wake up for Fajr, okay, fine. We don't want to wait, we're too busy for Zohar, okay. Asr, yeah, you know, I was a bit busy, I had to take the kids here, there. Okay. <clears throat> so every namaz you have missed from the time you came of age till today needs to be repaid to Allah. Why? Because every namaz will be one string holding your boat from traveling towards Allah. You want to cross the sea? You want to cover the ocean? And namazes are not intact. Okay. How many... How many Ramadans have you... How many Ramzans have you gone through and missed your fasting? How many days were you sick? How many days did you make excuses? How many days did you think that, oh my God, this goes over 10 hours, I can't, I'll die. That you missed and you did not repay Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every fast that you missed 
is holding you back from tra traveling that ocean towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For those of you that are of age, for those of you that have the means, for those of you that have the ability and have not been for Hajj, this is a big, big rope holding you back. What else is there? Zakat. How much of Zakat have you not paid? How much of Zakat have you tried to cheat yourself or cheat Allah? That, oh, it's, it's not that much only. How many times have you made excuses for something that does not belong to you? For something that you do not even wear? We look in our families and amongst the women is the thing that, yeah, we must keep it. We must keep it. But it doesn't matter. It will never come out, but we must keep it. And every year, this much zakat, this much zakat, this much zakat. Every penny, every penny is counting towards you and will hold you accountable on Yom Al Qiyamah. It is said all the gold that you will have will be melted and poured down your back, stuck onto you. Eat it. What are you going to do? Your own wealth will come and beat you up. Why? Because you did not pay the zakat on you. You did not purify. What is zakat? Zakat is not a, a penalty. It is not a tax. No. Even your wealth needs to be purified. Allah needs you to purify your body, which you're not doing. And He tells us purify your wealth by paying zakat. You still don't want to do it? Okay, that's another thing. So all these ropes are holding you back from traveling to Allah. If you have all these ropes attached to you, then even if you stand all night in the hajjud, if you fast all day every year, you are still held back. You are still held back. Then this is hukukullah. These are the rights of Allah that we need to ask for forgiveness from. Then there's hukukul ibad, the rights of the servants, for my elders, for my brothers, for my children, from my wife, from my uncles, from people I stole land of, from people that stole land of me. What about all that? How many people did we go and tell other people, you know this person don't trust him, you know that person don't trust him, this person did this. How many people have we defamed? How many people's izzats have we, have we destroyed? How many people's money did we borrow and not pay back? Do you think all of that is forgiven? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that what is between me and you, O servant, I will decide whether to forgive you or not. So a person might not read a single namaz in his life. Not a single salah in his life. And died. He goes to Allah. Allah says, where's the salah? You didn't pray a single one. He'll say, Allah, you're my Lord. You know, I, I knew you were Gafur Rahim. Allah can say, okay, you know what? Fine, go. But where hukukul ibad is concerned, where you have stolen the right of another human being, Allah cannot pardon you until that person forgives you. So people that you have wronged, go and find them. Ask them, look brother, I'm sorry, I was young, I was naive, I was in bad company, I did not understand, now I'm feeling the remorse, please forgive me. If they, if, if, if they then tell you to run away or go away, then you have done your bit. But even beyond that, you can still read some Quran, read some ikhlas, read some, do some zikr and say, oh Allah, this reward of this amal, put it into this person's name. There are people that we dealt with and we don't even know where they are. We didn't even know their name. We can't even remember what they look like. What about them? For them as well, make some sadaqah. Make some sadaqah, build a well or do something and say, oh Allah, for all the people I have wronged, put it into their name. Until, these, until the people keep drinking from this well or praying in this masjid or reading from this Quran, that they keep getting the reward for it. And Allah will compensate them on Yawm Al-Qiyamah more than what the few thousand pounds that you owed them. Whatever you owed them for one neki, for one ni'mah, for one good deed. Subhanallah, look at this. One good deed. What is one good deed? We say when we read Durood on the Prophet wasallam, Allah blesses us with ten good deeds. Ten. Ten darajat are increased for you. Your station is increased tenfold and ten sins are forgiven. But what is the good deed? The good deed is that thing, one good deed is that thing that your mother will not be willing to give you on Yom Al Qiyamah even. On that day, the mother will turn away from her child 
just for one neki, for one good deed. 